Hello. In this video we are going to discuss the basics of the artificial horizon. The artificial horizon is probably the most important flight instrument a pilot has, especially during instrument flying. It may be beneficial to watch the video on the gyroscope, which can be found in this channel. As usual, we will only be discussing the basics of the instrument. Firstly, let us look at the basic characteristics of the instrument readout. In the center of the instrument, fixed to the frame, is the part of the instrument that denotes the aircraft. It is designed to look like wings, and the small dot in the middle denotes the nose of the aircraft. This part of the instrument does not move. The instrument has a moving display covering most of the frontage. One half is colored blue, and the other half is colored brown. The blue represents the sky, and the brown represents the ground. Clearly, it's a good idea to keep the blue at the top in normal flight. There is a thin white line between the blue and brown. This denotes the horizon. Above and below the horizon line, are markings with numbers next to them. These numbers and lines denote angles above and below the horizon. More on that later. At the top is a triangle, or pointer. This does not move either, and helps to indicate the angle of bank of the aircraft. To help with that, the instrument has markings on each side of the outer rim at the top. The first large line is 30 degrees. The smaller two lines before that, indicate 10 and 20 degrees. The next intermediate marking indicates a 45 degree bank, and the last line indicates a 60 degree bank. More on that later. The mechanical versions will usually have a pull to cage knob at the bottom. This is to realign the gyroscope mechanism after startup. Again, more on that later. In theory, if the aircraft is flying straight and level, the wings will be straight and lined up on the horizon, and the upper pointer will be pointing to the zero degrees line, as shown. If we want to climb, we pull the nose up above the horizon. In this diagram, the nose is pulled up to the five degree line. The opposite is true for descent. We allow the nose to drop below the horizon to descend the aircraft. Here, the aircraft's nose is on the 10 degree nose down line. If we then wish to turn, we bank the aircraft left or right. In this diagram we are turning left, with a bank angle of 30 degrees. You can see the top pointer aligned with the 30 degree bank line. Likewise, for a right turn with 30 degrees of bank. Combinations of these can also be flown. For example, this shows a climbing turn to the left. The nose pitch is 5 degrees up, with a 30 degree left bank. Conversely, this shows a descending turn to the right, with a nose down pitch of 10 degrees, and a right bank of 30 degrees. When finishing the maneuver, return to straight and level. We are now going to look at the basics of how the artificial horizon works. As a recap, the gyroscope has a property called rigidity. This is the gyroscope's ability to remain at a fixed position in space, whilst the frame around it etc. is moved. The artificial horizon contains a gyroscope, with a rotor that spins level with the horizon. In other words, the spin axis is vertical. Once up to speed, the gyroscope will try to remain level with the real horizon. The rotor is connected to two gimbals. The first gimbal, called the roll gimbal, rotates along the longitudinal axis which turns as the aircraft rolls. The second gimbal, called the pitch gimbal, 
rotates along the lateral axis, which turns as the aircraft pitches. This allows the rotor to remain level with the horizon as the aircraft pitches and rolls. The gimbal frame is connected to the horizon reference arm, which in turn moves the instrument display. As discussed earlier, a mechanical artificial horizon will have a pull to cage knob. This is a device which centers the display after startup. When the aircraft is shut down, the gyroscope will no longer have angular velocity. This means the rigidity properties of the rotor disappear, and therefore it becomes free to rotate and settle in a non-horizontal position. Once the rotor is rotating at normal speed after startup, it won't necessarily mean it is in the correct orientation. Therefore, we use the pull to cage knob. When pulled, the gyroscope is forced into the upright straight and level position, and locked to the instrument case. The knob can then be released to allow the gyroscope to operate normally. Like all gyroscopes, the artificial horizon will suffer from precession and wander errors. We would prefer no errors, as any movement away from the horizontal alignment would mean the instrument would not show the correct attitude. Fortunately, there are mechanisms to minimize these errors. Instruments are powered differently, i.e., electrically driven, or suction pump driven. We will look at the suction pump version. To keep the rotor in the horizontal plane, pendulous vanes are fitted to the rotor. If the rotor is horizontal, all vanes are thrusting air at the same force. Therefore, no overall correcting force is present. As the rotor moves away from the horizontal, a relevant vane will increase thrust, which helps to push the rotor back to the horizontal. Once back to the horizontal, the vane thrust equalizes again. This ensures the pilot does not need to cage the instrument in flight in normal circumstances. That's the end of this video, where we discussed the artificial horizon, how it works, and how errors are corrected. I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.